love this plan. I'm excited to be a part of it. Let's do it! Ghostbusters Afterlife, released in 2021 after many delays with the whole pandemic and everything from 2020, and this film is directed by Jason Reitman, who has also directed such films like Juno, Thank You for Smoking, Up in the Air, and The Front Runner. And this film is starring Harry Coon, Finn Wolfhard, McKenna Grace, and Paul Rudd. And there may or may not be some other cameos of some other previous Ghostbuster cast members in here. I feel like it's safe to talk spoilers about this movie because it's been several years plus we're getting the sequel out this week and the trailers come out that has kind of spoiled the cameos from the first one so I feel like I can talk about it in this movie I'm, I'm probably going to talk about it in this movie so if you haven't seen this movie yet but you plan on going to see Frozen Empire and not watch this movie I guess then don't watch this review. I don't know. That that just sounded weird in my mind. But yeah, don't watch this review if you don't want to be spoiled about the cameos. Even though all of the cameos in this film were spoiled for me. Like the ending scene of this movie was spoiled for me on social media. Because everyone posts it. And really everyone was praising it. Everyone from my vantage point loved the, the final scene of this movie. But gosh darn it. I wish I would have experienced it live for the first time just now. So... Such is life. Such is afterlife. <laughs> All right, let's talk about it. Egon Spangler has recently died capturing an unknown entity. And the only closest of kin Egon has is his estranged daughter, who moves out to his desolate farmland in the middle of Oklahoma with her two children. Her son Trevor, who is a teenage boy looking to win the affections of the local pretty girl in town, and Phoebe, who plays a character who is clearly on the spectrum, but is able to notice all of the weird happenings around the house. And the more she digs in and researches, the more she finds out that her grandpa stumbled upon a supernatural conspiracy happening here in town. So now it's up to these kids and a couple of other friends they make along the way to stop the evil ghostly entity from escaping this town and ruling the world. So now that the plot synopsis is aside, I feel now we are free to talk about spoilers and all the cameos and who the villain actually is in this movie, which leads me to the first aspect of the film that I'm going to criticize. It's not really a criticism, because I do enjoy it. I love fan service. I love nostalgia, because you know what? I'm a fan. I'm a fan of Ghostbusters. I love this franchise. I used to watch the first Ghostbusters film over and over and over again. When I was a kid, we recorded it from the TV on a VHS. We never actually owned the official one. We just had a TV recording of the movie. And then whenever Ghostbusters 2 came on, I was always excited, even though it's not the best film that's ever been made, but I was always excited when it came on because it was the sequel that we didn't have a TV recording which I guess we could have gotten if we just would have hit record on a blank VHS tape, now that I think about it. Why didn't we have Ghostbusters 2? <laughs> Probably because my parents realized that Ghostbusters 2 was not good at all and not worth wasting the coveted space on a recorded VHS tape that we could use for something else. And that may be why I tried to avoid watching this movie, because this is my first viewing of it. I have not seen this since its release, and leading up to it, it just felt like one of those movies that, oh hey, we have no more original ideas here in Hollywood, so we're just going to rehash the first movie in this franchise and just redo it with a couple of brand new characters, a couple younger characters, so we can spin off on a brand new franchise and trilogy with these people. Just felt like everyone was doing that at the time, and I know that was a couple of years ago, and hell, they're still doing it, but it's probably why I just turned away from this movie. I didn't want to have the first ruin for me. Even though I thought the remake in 2016 with all the women, it was okay. I don't think it was as terrible as everyone was saying it was, but that one was disappointing because it was just brand new. It had no ties to the original Ghost Ghostbusters film, which I feel like if it did, it would have done so much better. So this one has so many ties to the original Ghostbusters film, which is why this film did so great in the box office. I look at the numbers and it says that this budget for this film was 75 million, which already is actually a pretty cheap number for a film that's already established franchise, but it made well over that. It made a huge profit for the studio, which makes me happy because there are so many people out there that love nostalgia, that love this franchise that grew up with this film and wanted to see it rehash on screen for you. Because this film 
is almost a complete rehashing of the first movie. The villain in here is the exact same. How the villain comes to be is the exact same thing. And then we have the amazing cameos with our original Ghostbusters who are left here in real life. They show up and they start delivering lines like they did in the original movie. It's the exact same thing. Just a couple of twists and turns on a couple of lines that they said, like when Gozer asked Ray if he is a god, this time, the idiot said yes! And she's uncrossing the streams and everything. Peter Venkman is just being Peter Venkman, which is just fantastic. Thank you, Bill Murray, for coming back to this. I feel like he's such a grumpy old man now. I feel like he doesn't want to come back and do anything. So to see him come back and do this, it made me happy. And it looks like he's going to be in Frozen Empire too. So thank you. Thank you, Bill Murray. We we do love you. We really do. You Could you be happy, please? Now, the newer aspects of this franchise with our newer cast, I actually really enjoy. I like this crew of of kids. It's kind of going off of the whole idea of Stranger Things, like, hey, let's do ghosts and supernatural stuff and cool sci-fi fantasy things just with children, because it makes you feel like how you were as a child in the 80s. McKenna Grace, who is our main character, the main person that we're following in this story, she's unraveling all of Egon's little clues that he's leaving all throughout the house. She's fantastic. And I love how she plays someone who is on the spectrum. She's not playing at being autistic. Those actors out there, you know what I mean when I'm saying that. It comes across as honest and authentic, and I really appreciate it. And Finn Wolfhard is basically playing the same character he plays in Stranger Things, just a little older and a little bit more subdued. He's not so over the top as he is in Stranger Things, but his ugliness doesn't play into his acting ability, which he has, and I think he's pretty good in this movie. <laughs> That's the worst backhanded compliment I've ever given on this channel. Oh, man. Oh, this is great. I love this. And Paul Rudd is here, I'm sure, just to get the average viewer to come watch this movie. And from what we get of him, he's actually okay. I mean, he's Paul Rudd. He's Paul Rudd here. I feel like he's Paul Rudd in every movie now. Paul Rudd's just Paul Rudd. And that fact is actually a good thing to have in your movie because Paul Rudd as a person is pretty damn fantastic. So, yeah, let's just put Paul Rudd in our movie. Yeah, we'll figure out what we want to do with him, but if he's in there, it's just going to be a good time. The visual effects in here, I think, are great. They stem off of the 80s visual effects that we got with the original film. Like, they paid homage to the 80s style visual effects, but they also updated it. They refreshed it. They refined it a little bit. And I also love that we have a car chase scene with the Ghostbuster mobile, or whatever it's called, in this movie. We never got that in the original two Ghostbusters films. Hell, I don't even think we had a scene in the car in the Ghostbusters movies. Here they have a whole chase scene which made this little kid who watched this movie as a young five-year-old kid all the time made me so happy because I always wanted a car chase scene in that cool ass hearse that was turned into a Ghostbuster mobile. Ghostbusters Afterlife is a solid requel to this franchise that has rebooted it in a certain way where now it can go off into its own brand new franchise with five ten more films which I'm totally okay with. I like this cast. I like where they're going with it. I like the ghosts that come in here. Hopefully we get some brand new ghosts in Frozen Empire. Looks like we are, but it looks like we're getting more screen time with the original Ghostbusters too, which is also making me excited. So I'm going to give Ghostbusters Afterlife three and a half out of five Blu-rays. I am above average. So guys, if you've seen Ghostbusters Afterlife, what did you think about it? Or if you've never seen it before and you stumbled across because of this video, then comment below and let me know what you thought about it. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button to make sure you hit that bell. See you the next time I'm released next movie review. So guys, I will see you next time on the channel. But in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.